how to add policies to your Shopify store. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can add policies to your Shopify store, what is the proper way to display those policies and more. So let's get into it. Now, just to show you guys a brief example, this is one of the basic refund policies that I've added to this sample store. And I'll show you guys step-by-step step how you can create your own as well. Now, the first thing you need to do is actually to set up your policies. So this includes policies relating to privacy concerns, to returns, to handling deliveries, as well as any other type of policy, depending on the niche that you're in. So if you're offering courses, you might have to enter some segregated policies related to that. If you are running a membership based service, then you might have some different policies, you know, pertaining to that. So to set up some of your basic policies, simply click on settings on the bottom left. And once you click on settings, you're going to scroll down and the second last option is policies. So once you do that, you're going to be able to see all of the basic policy options. Now, I have turned on self-serve returns on the default Shopify application. These are going to be turned off and you will see some basic return rules. So you can click on manage over here to change these default return rules, especially if you want to allow basic return options to be available to your customers without a customer service agent, then you need to make sure that you are setting these up correctly. So the first thing you have to do is add your return window, which basically means how many days after their purchase can someone return their product. For us, this is going to be 14 days. You can even reduce this to seven days if you want, but that can seem a bit too fast. So if you want, you can do a seven day return policy as well. Now, after that, you have your shipping cost. So if anyone is going to return a product, then who is going to pay the shipping on that? You can add a free return shipping. You can add a flat rate for return shipping, or you can add the customer provides return shipping. So whatever the return shipping is going to cost, the customer has to provide it. Then you also have the option of adding a restocking fee, especially if your business is prone to these kinds of frauds where people might use your item and then return it, then you can add a restocking fee as well. Now you also have final sale items which cannot be returned, so you can add those specific collections or items. This can also include things such as lingerie or jewelry items or perfumes, which you do not accept in returns. Now, once you have set these, you're gonna click on save and you can go back into your policies page. Now, after that, you have individual written return and refund policies. You also have privacy policies, terms of service, shipping policies, and contact information. So the first thing you need to consider is that whether or not you're gonna have your return requests turned on. So instead of having to email you, people can directly you know, file a return and then send the product back without having to, you know, go through multiple different layers of customer service and all. So if you want to do that, click on turn on over here. And if a customer's item fits these requirements, they can send it back. Now, after that, you have your written return and refund policy. Now, I've built this refund policy with ChatGPT. So you can easily build your return policy with ChatGPT. And all you have to do to do that is to simply go on ahead and copy your basic pointers like this, command C, command V, and then just add the prompt, build Shopify, return and exchange policies. No returns will be accepted, only store credit is provided. So like this, you can enter your basic prompt and now ChatGPT is going to create your actual return policy and then they even write, you know, some of the basic steps that people can use. You can always ask it to make this slightly more detailed and you can just paste it over here and then you can remove your top guidelines like this. Now, after you've entered your basic policy, you can just click on save on the top right as you go. And then you have your privacy policy. So if you click on create with template, you will be able to see a basic template of a privacy policy that is going to be added whenever you enter the privacy policy by default. Now, you guys can see note to merchant insert the following sentence. If Shopify's ad services 
are added. Now I'm going to remove this because I'm not using particularly a add service. So I'm going to add this and then I'm going to add the date when I'm writing this. Now after this we are going to scroll down. Now we may update this privacy policy from time to time. And this is just very basic information and I am going to cut this out because note to merchant, you can insert this sentence if you're using Shopify's ad services, but I'm not, so I really don't even need this. So I'm going to remove it all together like so. Now, after that, we are going to scroll down and category, categories of recipients. Now I'm going to remove all of this category information. Then after that, we are going to scroll down and we have third-party websites, children's data. I don't like to include children's data to my website because usually you're just selling products. It's really not that necessary. And we are going to cut out the last part and you can just remove the heading just because it can seem a little drastic. Now, after that, we are going to make sure that we have made this not a heading text. And then after that, you have the retention of information and we are just going to cut out some of the ad policies if they are not included. Then you have international users. You also have your contact info. And we're going to remove that. Now, once you've built this particular privacy policy, you can scroll down and then you can add any pointers that you have. So if you want to add anything to this, if you want to make this shorter, you can easily use ChatGPT to make this shorter or for this to be slightly more concise, or if you have a particular point in your privacy policy, maybe you are selling data of customers, maybe you're providing personal details to customers, then you want to make sure that you include that in your privacy policy. Now, after you scroll down, you have your terms of service and you can even do the same thing. You can create with a template and let's say in your terms of service, Maybe you don't sell to a particular country. Maybe you have any governing laws that don't allow you. Maybe you have affiliations that don't allow you. So you can add those over here as well. And then you have your shipping policies. Now the shipping policy is going to be really variable depending on your business. It might be that you might not ship within the estimated delivery date and you're not liable for that. Maybe it's that if any product is damaged during the shipping time then the seller is not going to be held accountable for that so it can be a variable thing depending on how you're sending your products so whatever is the shipping policy of your couriers you can easily find that and then just make some changes to, to that and then add that over here and then you have some basic contact info and then you can click on save on the top right to actually embed all of these now, a lot of people add their policies, but they forget to actually integrate this onto their website. So the privacy policy does not need its own page. It's going to just be integrated at the footer. And to integrate this in your footer, just click on customize on your Shopify store. And once you click on customize, go into your footer. And once you click on your footer, you can scroll down and you will see this option in your policy links called show policy links. Now you can choose to enable this or disable this. So you want to make sure you are enabling this. And once you do that, just click on save on the top right. And that is all you have to do to enable your privacy policy. So now if I scroll down, I have my refund, privacy, terms of service, and contact info all added to my website's footer. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.